chart stations are really a talk of the town everybody is asking for chart yeah. stations or looking around for some today because we've got two electric vehicles yes <laughs> and we ran out of charge on one of them <laughs> so uh, what is your view quick start ch- chart stations battery swapping or both should they come up is that the future for uh, for ev vehicles for for evi's products that is our power trains we uh, we would like to say we could divide the things into bikes and cars and buses mm-hmm. cars and buses cannot be swapped the battery can cannot be swapped right, so be. bikes is something which we are planning to do okay. in which uh, uh, you could have swappable batteries so that's something is possible um, second of charging stations uh, we are working on few projects where rapid charging is possible similar to kind of tesla where we are able to achieve uh, an 80% charge in less than 1 hour or 10 minutes so that's something which we are working on and within a few months time you will be able to see that product on road and would that be like a standard chademo standard or it's a proprietary standard uh it's a standard specified by the uh, ara so uh, iec code something is there so i i cannot specify the code as of now but okay. there's something okay. which we can work out and chademo standards yes we can work out on that also there's no problem so uh, we are bringing out a few technologies from abroad getting the charging stations charging infrastructure in space uh, we are in talks with mort we are in talks with uh, dhi and taking things forward on that end so let's see how it goes right yeah i guess uh, we have tried to address the problem from the needs not from the wants uh, we tried to make our battery uh, having sufficient capacity to try and uh, not charge it more than once a day secondly uh, we will and always make swappable batteries as a as a must in our products and then uh, what priyank said uh, our batteries charge 80% in less than an hour already so and we uh, i am aware of technology uh, that has uh, charging times as fast as 10 minutes there is uh, dumb charging available in 10 minutes and maybe within a year's time we could see things uh, uh, getting popular around the world with that sort of uh, charging times so uh, yes uh, it has to be swappable batteries or make the batteries uh, capacity big enough so that it's charged once a day hmm. uh, because creating infrastructure is something that uh, is too tedious for be it for a government or for a private entity yeah so uh, on charging infrastructure our view is that uh, there are three challenges hmm. charging infrastructure makes sense when it's fast it's standardized yes that means everyone's using the same plug and there is a network running it hmm. uh whereas whatever uh, amount of charging infrastructure that we've seen in india so far hasn't been standardized it's probably a plug point that you can go and plug in your own charger there is no network supporting it it's only a piece of hardware that gives you power hmm. it's not connected to any server so it's it's impractical to use from point to point unless you're on a, a subscription model through a network like hmm. you see in parts of europe and america uh and with fast charging the issue is that we don't have enough products that can uh, are capable to take, take in fast charge right so today in the market we barely have maybe two or three products that can take fast charge and uh, the density of products in india today uh, sorry the density and population of electric vehicles around india is 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 it's, it's not that dense if you go to any city uh, you may find a lot of two wheelers in delhi or in ahmedabad or maybe in chennai and bangalore but that's about it it's it's not dense enough to put up a charging uh, network now uh, as a uh, through this information is from a study conducted by berkeley laboratories uh, back in i think 2012 they estimate that a city of delhi would need close to 3000 to 4000 charging points now to put up that kind of infrastructure is a great deal of money and you need that many number of vehicles to support it uh and it has to be a revenue driven model the government cannot just go out there and put up thousands of charging points because you have to fund it in some way nor can the industry uh, a few companies have taken initiatives to put up a few charging points around their offices in certain campuses but it's not sustainable uh, so there are these three issues now coming to fast charging uh, there are technologies in europe that can charge a bus using maybe a 40 kilowatt hour battery 400 kilowatt hour battery in under 1 minute that to on induction hmm. so wireless charging of a 400 kilowatt hour battery in less than a minute so there are these technologies available but do they really make sense to india first you would buy a half a million dollar bus for that and then another quarter million dollar charging station for that 
So these technologies are more relevant for markets where there's a long range usage, where people ride hundreds of kilometers a day. Um, one use case for India could be to connect cities with fast charging infrastructure for cars, where you could have expressways with multiple charging points or high state highways, where people could then start taking their electric four wheelers from a city to another. But at this stage, where our usage is typically uh, within the city for two wheelers or four wheelers, it doesn't really make any sense for India. So, we personally feel, I personally feel, and our view is that we're trying to follow what's been done in the West, trying to replicate that model, but it's not really relevant to India. Uh, our two wheeler users typically do not have an average usage of more than 30 kilometers a day. So, home and office charging is more than sufficient for them. Uh, in our six years of uh, being in the market, we've never had a user complain of the lack of charging infrastructure. Yeah. So it's more relevant to a few big cities in India and maybe highway connectivity. But uh, but till the time that we do not have millions of vehicles and uh, yeah. a few lakh vehicles in each city, uh, our robust charging infrastructure is not viable or practical. Yeah, but uh, do you like you said there aren't enough vehicles, so there's no need for the infrastructure. Uh, uh, it's not that there's no need; it's also uh, it's actually both. Uh, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Uh, how will a private organization or the government fund it? But would it work the other way around? If there was an infrastructure, would the sales of the EVs go up? So that's been seen across the world. But then, uh, if you take up the example of uh, the Netherlands, uh, as a country, the Netherlands had a target of. Uh, putting 20,000 electric four-wheelers on roads by the mid of 2014. Hmm. They were able to do the double of that six months before that deadline was supposed to end. Oh. Uh, they could do this because they set up a huge char uh, network Charge of chargers. Yeah. But again, people use their cars for moving from a city to another. Hmm. Uh, their usage is much more. Yes. And a lot of their population parks their car on public roads. Unlike India where we have our own parking garages, garages in our own premises, uh, they don't. So a lot of their vehicles are parked on streets where they use this infrastructure on a daily basis. Hmm. Okay, that answers that. Yeah, I just like to say that what if we would reverse the model and crowdsource and crowd, crowd fund this. So as in community uh, run, community based charge points just to build up the confidence that there are a few charge points out there and people are willing to put them but out. But again, you need to figure out a revenue model around yeah, it. That's what because it to so support and fund a charging yeah. uh, charging network, yes. you need to first put in the capital to build it. It is yeah. capital uh, intensive. Then maintain it. And uh, the another issue that we have in India that the government is also working towards now uh, is that uh, our utilities, power utilities or what you call discoms, yeah. uh, are not that... Uh, easily accessible to get power connectivity to these charge points. Now, today a charging in, uh, network would require you to have charge points all across at random locations and yeah. the, ch the challenge here is to get that power into that char charging station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot only have charging points in public uh, parking spots or outside a restaurant, but it has to be everywhere. So it's, it's not yet reached that point where we, it's viable. Yeah, we're working on awareness right now. Similar to what uh, Plugin India is trying to do and Kamlesh and uh, you guys are trying to do, there's another effort that we are uh, putting in with uh, one of the largest dairy companies in India. Mm -hmm. uh, this company operates out of Gujarat and uh, they have a doorstep delivery model. Mm -hmm. uh, this company plans to uh, put up uh, electric two-wheelers at uh, across India at all their uh, de uh, delivery outlets and depots and they would deliver milk on electric two-wheelers. Uh, the company also, this particular company also aims at becoming a net electric vehicle company in the next five years. That means every drop of milk from their farm to their uh, wow. bottling plant. So this, this company basically aims at moving every drop of milk from their farm to their bottling plant to their distribution network and eventually to people's homes on electric vehicles in the next five years. Uh, as a company, they will be uh, using up close to 5,000 electric two-wheelers in the next three to four years. And as a commitment, uh, they have committed to, as an effort towards uh, giving back to the uh, industry and the society, uh, they have committed to put up a charging point at every one of their points. So this would mean about 2,000 charging points. And the commitment goes beyond this. And they say that we will make this available and accessible to all 
electric vehicle users free of charge wow awesome that's a good step yeah yes Well, on, on a lighter note uh, on our bicycles you will never run out of charge because you can always <laughs> pedal <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. uh, and uh, well india is moving ahead in the right direction uh, there are a lot of uh, nice exciting projects that will be coming up in front for example denmark uh, it has about uh, 2000 electric bikes uh, on road uh, in a public bicycle sharing uh, model uh i i guess india is soon to see the likes of that as well so yeah let's keep our fingers crossed for that yes we are very yeah, hopeful tesla as a company uh, always wanted to develop the model 3 yeah right from their inception but model 3 is actually going to be yeah. their fourth product okay they actually picked up a lotus vehicle made turn right. it turned it electric turned it into a beast of a vehicle and put out there to make some money to be able to develop the model s yeah i am with you on through that, that yeah. income they are now developing the model x and now as a company when they've been able to raise a lot of capital now they're working on the model 3 hmm. so sometimes you have to develop products that are more not for the ordinary person not yeah. for the commoner but to to be able to address your capital yeah. issues yeah to get yeah. to the high end market person so it's it's taken tesla about 10 years to be able to get the model 3 out But yeah. that was the car that they always wanted to develop. Right. He, Tesla said that uh, you need a small fortune, which is what Ajit was saying. But then he said you have to start with a large one. Yeah. <laughs> By the time you're out with your products, your fortune becomes small. <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, no. I mean that <coughs> jokes apart. Uh, I like that philosophy because uh, let me just be very crass and gross. Why do we want to sell to Chindi public? <laughs> Chindi public will always follow. you're not going to ever get them to lead they're never going to pick up a product because it's good they're going to pick it up because the guy next door has it right. so we should not pursue that let's go in for high end vehicles let's push performance to the limit and there will be a few people who will pick it up for 10 times the cost because it's not going to matter mercedes made cycles i mean even the even the best companies make products which otherwise sell for very little so why are we trying to address a a, a wrong category you know let, let's go in for the thinkers let's go in for the pioneers let's go in for those who are willing to you know put the money where their mouth is so to speak i think let's just uh, reverse this let's not uh, go in for that traditional thinking you know appeal to the masses thing at all let's leave yeah but, but this, would uh, you yeah. i wouldn't really agree with it because yeah. uh, it it might take a long time to trickle down as really you said really tesla took 10 years oh yeah much more uh, instead <laughs> uh, been sure yet. yeah have have a disruptive product have something innovative Like that uh, that that really penetrates uh, it's right it's bang it's on coming it's coming yeah, that yeah, coming yeah. so i i guess uh, that's where and to promote evs uh, we started from the building blocks the bicycle yeah. on two wheels so absolute right, right, right yeah. absolute grassroots Dairy wage on so i guess that will really push uh, once people see recognize battery operated vehicles no matter in what size they are then it's going to really get promoted yeah so you think that model won't work in india it might not work anymore. it might not it might not work seeing the global scenario because yeah. we don't have so much time in our hands mm. yeah you yeah, want to develop fast yeah see okay. india as a market is now uh, the government and the industry are looking at uh, 6 to 7 million that's 60 to 70 lakh units annually being sold by 2020 hmm. that's the vision behind the nemmp plan and that cannot be possible unless we have mass market products that are relevant to all kinds of uh, users hmm. uh, penetration has to go all the way down uh it cannot be a trickle down effect uh, it wouldn't work in a market like ours uh where a larger chunk of the order of, of the population cannot afford uh the high end performance vehicles and we don't really need those uh, vehicles today our um, our market doesn't demand high performance vehicles at this stage we okay. need to we need to give these products in the hands of people who use these use uh, uh, their vehicles to move about 20 30 kilometers a day uh and have a great amount of issues accessing petrol uh, mm -hmm. bunkers so there's a huge market out there that that you can just go in uh, supply to it's just about consumer awareness and changing that whole mindset that electric vehicles don't work okay yeah, yeah. that mindset shift is necessary yeah, yeah. Uh, i, I guess uh, right i guess yeah. there ought to be products that fit into everybody's pocket there's a user who has limited usage it should fit him there's a user who requires a high performance a high end uh, vehicle uh, that is also available so uh, products is, is, i guess is the range of products that yes, uh, yes. there has to be there and uh, it's already there it's already coming yeah mm -hmm. yes in fact uh, evi is developing platforms in which you can have 
uh, an EV in terms of uh, what an Activa, Honda Activa costs right. and going up to a BMW. Right. So that's the kind of range and powertrains which we are looking at, the kind of platforms which we are looking at. So within the next uh, year or so, you'll get to see lots of our powertrains in various platforms. Let's see how it goes. You're saying we're going to have the best of both worlds. Yes. We're going to have high-end products and we're going to have... Yes. Right. Yes. So yes. You need to have a product for everyone hmm. yeah. to be able to really make that yes. impact. Yes.